All right, guys, we gotta go move a dozer and maybe a few other pieces of equipment today. Let's do a little uh, truck driving 101 video. What do you say? Totally random, you guys probably can't see it, but there's a massive spider web between these trucks. See the little guy hanging right there in no man's land? About to walk right through him. So, first thing I want to say before we get too far into this is you guys got to keep in mind I do not truck for a living, I truck out of necessity. So, uh, the, th the way I go about things may be a little bit different than some people go about things, but uh, this is kind of how I do it. So, first things first, we start off in the morning. I always uh, Start off with a good old hood pop and check everything. I'll give the old bulldog a pull there. I'm not going to sit here and lie to you and tell you I check oil every time I take off. But I check it the majority of the times, especially if it's been ran hard or i got a big day ahead of me. But a uh, quick little glance under everything. Make sure uh, nothing major's out of place or anything's loose or anything's rubbing. We just want to look for shiny stuff or hoses and stuff have been rubbing. That's usually what gets you uh, get you in trouble there. But uh, take a little glance around on this side. I put a new uh, temperature sensor in here for the fan the other day. Make sure that's not leaking. It's looking pretty good. I think we're good to roll underneath there. You may have to put a seal on that one these days. It's not leaking to where it's dripping. But it's definitely starting to get a little moist up there. Looks good. Let's close her down. All right, make sure everything underneath the hood's good. Next thing I usually do is hop in, make sure she's in neutral, fire it up. You guys hear that buzzing noise and see the red light there? That's because we're low on air pressure. So uh, while it's building air pressure, I'll turn on the lights, I'll turn on the hazards. I'll make a quick trip around the truck, just kind of look everything over. I usually do this is one thing I do pretty much for sure no matter what is uh, give every tire a kick on the way around uh, that's the quickest way to blow four or five hundred dollars and ruin a good day is uh, take off with a flat tire or a low tire it's a pain in the butt to put air in tires but it's not as bad as changing the tire and then uh, of course you go around the back make sure all the lights are working everything's burning Looking good so far. It's a new tire we just put on back there. You have to give me a shovel and get that off the deck. Oh yeah. You're doing good there, bud. Oh yeah. <laughs> Now as far as a thorough inspection of the rest of the truck, this is kind of what I do it's every morning whenever I walk around the truck or every time I use it. I'll uh, kind of look over a different section very thoroughly, whether it be the uh, rear ends or the front ends, the trailer. I glance at everything, but I'll just pick a section and kind of give it a little bit more of a look over the rest. Uh, Officer Hooper's got a page. Indiana Seabed page. He used to do a good job of posting just random pictures of things he found, like loose uh, fifth wheel bolts or uh, loose slack adjuster. And it just kind of gave you the uh, hint to uh, go look at stuff and kind of glance at it, look it over. But uh, this is kind of what I was talking about here. See that shiny spot? I need to do something with that to get those hoses up off there. And uh, you want to look for, uh, as Officer Hoover always says, shiny spots. And dry powdery rust. Dry powdery rust usually means something's loose and the shiny spot means something's uh, rubbing. So, kind of look everything over and make sure she's good to go. I think we're good to go. Aaron's getting that little bit of stuff cleaned off the deck. We'll hop in the cab and uh, hit the road. Alright guys, hopped in the cab. First things first, seatbelt kind of important if you want to stay alive if you have an accident so we'll go ahead and throw that on next thing i want to make sure i got air pressure air pressure is uh crucial I'm supposed to have around 120 pounds when the governor kicks out maybe one day i'll do a video over how air brakes work and, 
and how that works but uh, that'll be a, another video for another day uh, everything else is good to roll so you got two knobs here the yellow one is the parking brake for the truck so it releases the parking brake on the truck the red one releases the parking brakes on the trailer so basically you just push those in it applies the air to the chamber the air overcomes the spring and releases the brake and then you're good to go now from there you're ready to find the gear and hit the road now this truck is not the best example some of you have commented before and uh so i need to adjust my clutch brake well you're correct the only problem is the clutch brake is the clutch in this truck is almost done it is out of adjustment i will have to that's on the winter list of projects is to put a new clutch in this truck so the way the clutch brake would work is whenever you push the pedal down the first little bit it disengages it from the transmission if you shove it all the way to the floor and kind of hold it there it stops the input shaft of the transmission from turning it allows it to fall into gear like that without grinding if you don't get it all the way down see if i can do an example here uh that's not the see how it grinds a little bit if you push it down and hold it for just a second it'll fall right into gear uh same thing whenever you engage your pto push down hold a little bit it'll go right into gear so we are uh we're good to roll one other thing i should point out is check your mirrors there's nothing worse than getting going down the road and not checking your mirrors and not be able to see where you're going it's not been a little bit of an issue in this truck captain cleaner likes his mirrors in a little bit of a different place than uh, what i like my mirrors so we kind of go back and forth on the mirrors a little bit but it's not the not the total end of the world so now i'll try to get some video of this as we get to rolling but with a clutch and a transmission setup and a semi once you get rolling you don't necessarily use the clutch the difference is a semi transmission like the one we're driving has what they call sliding clutches well, a sliding clutch whoop, to break, a sliding clutch you don't have to use the clutch because you want to match engine rpm with transmission rpm and it'll, the clutch will slide into place now most of your like five speed vehicles on the road they have what they call a synchronized transmission it actually has a synchronizer it does that for you and matches those so they go together so in that case you have to use the clutch if you try to drive a synchronized transmission without uh if you try to drive a synchronized transmission without using the clutch you will uh you will burn them synchronizers up and you will ruin that transmission so basically all i'm doing and i'll get some video of this later is i'm using my throttle and whenever i get to I don't know, 14, 1600 RPMs, uh, depending on where you want to be. I'll let off the throttle, slide it in the gear over there, and just get right back on the throttle, and we're good to go. I'll get some better video of that here in a minute. But, uh, we're heading out to pick up the old uh, John Deere 850 off the dam repair project and uh, move into the next one. So let's hit the road, and I'll show you when we get there. This may not be the best example guys i might be able to show you on a piece of paper a little better but whenever you make a turn especially if it's a tight turn you want to pull out and basically make a 90. so i'm going to pull out the yellow line i'm going to make a 90 and then i'm going to drive i'm going to let that wheel unwrap and i'm going to drive right down that line for some reason everybody, everybody has got the tendency to veer back over this way and if you got to make a tight turn i really uh, really affect your trailer greatly especially the longer your trailer is so uh, simple little trick and uh, for some reason whenever I go to show new guys how to drive they want to go out to that line and they want to cut right back over the white line you need to stay on that yellow line long enough that trailer come past the apex of that turn and it'll uh, help you get around the corner a lot better so we're uh, we're gonna hammer down and uh, head out there and get the get the dozer All right, guys, I said I'd try to show you on the paper here real quick, a little better idea of what I'm talking about. So this is my makeshift row. What I was talking about is if you're a truck, let's see if I can do this here. Most people come up to this intersection, and then if you've got a truck, they'll swing real wide. But for some reason, after they turn, they'll want to hook back over like this and then go down their lane. And that really causes a problem with your trailer right here. Let's do this other one in green here. So what all I'm saying is if you come up through here like this, you want to go right out to that yellow line and then take a 90 and follow that line down. Then once your trailer clears this corner, 
after that point you can kind of start coming back over into lane and going that way uh, you'd be amazed especially with a longer trailer how much of a difference that makes over that right there hopefully that makes sense let's head back out and get a dozer backed in here so now we need to put the trailer down to do that i need to engage the pto again i'm going to push the clutch all the way down to engage that clutch brake this turns the pto on the light indicates it on and this engages the hydraulics so we can operate the tail back here so, so get the tail on that what are you doing this morning morning Nothing like having a camera in your face first thing in the morning. Hanging in there like a hair in a biscuit. How about you, Mr. Dirt Perfect? I'm loving it. Aaron, uh, Aaron let me down this morning, but other than that, we're doing all right. How'd I let you down? Huh? How'd I let you down? I got them pad eyes for you. This is the first time in probably six months he beat me to this breakfast table. What? No. That's a lie. I remember having to call and wake you up one day. That wasn't to the breakfast table. That was to the job. <laughs> no, we met this at is the true. store. Oh, okay. I could be wrong yes. on this, so I'm just going to turn the camera off now. <laughs> Walking over here to get the L850, but uh, looking out there, this is the lake dam we repaired. It has been about two weeks since we completed this job, and it has rained non Stop. This thing's got, uh, we were just looking at it, it don't catch a whole lot of water in the water level when it's come up probably about 18 inches to uh, almost two feet. I know it's probably hard to tell on camera, but the good news is, fortunately, all of our repairs, I'll walk over here and show you real quick, but all of our repairs have held up perfect. There's not the slightest hairline crack, fracture, anything it is just exactly the way we left it which is beautiful just need to get some grass on it it's uh first of august it's crazy it's been this wet i think he did go ahead and sow some weed on there to try to get it to come up and then he'll uh, put some fescue on it oh about a month from now first of september so let's see if this girl will fire up We'll get her loaded on the trailer. I think we have to shovel little tracks out. Come on, baby. important one it uh, distributes the weight better i feel like i get a better uh spread between the truck and the trailer axles the other reason is when the blade is that way it really helps my visibility in the mirrors uh and it also makes it easier to unload because you're just pulling straight off so 
get these tracks cleaned out here and we'll get this thing backed up on here and chained up. You missed the spot. Oh yeah. You wanna know something funny? So on that video when we were building that lake for uh Gressel, like five people commented, your rollers aren't turning, your rollers aren't turning. It's funny, the dog just got like another 340 hours on it since that video and they're still turning. <laughs> well, I'm not picking on nobody. This always cracks me up whenever I work beside the dozer for eight or nine hours straight. Day after day a lot of times, and you guys point out rollers ain't turning or something wrong with the dozer. I'm like, I see it, I'm there. I, I get it, so. All right, enough rambling, let's load. If you want, I'll keep videoing while you and Matt tie this thing down. That way you got the whole video of... But it's not about tying now. It's about trucking. That's part of trucking. Making sure the load's secured. Come on, get down. Burning daylight, buddy. Burning daylight. Chop, chop. Did you really burn daylight on a cloudy day? It's still there. You just can't see it, I guess. Hey, uh, you missed some dirt back here. You ran over the dirt I pulled out. That's your fault. Usually we blame it on the guy that ain't there that day. No, it's just but today it it's Michael all three. Day. Yeah, today we're all three here. Blame it on Michael Day. Captain. <laughs> I wonder if he's getting mad at me yet. Doubtful. Highly doubtful to answer your question. What's he throwing that over here for? The blade. The short one? No, that should be a long one. Right. We gotta get a long one to go. Yeah. Yep. Oh. There you go, I need that one. You gotta do something? I'm gonna carry this back here where it goes. Hey, Matt! Hey, Matt! Did you find it? Yeah, if you don't mind, you wanna hook this up for me? Uh, DP's coming. What's the old saying? If you want anything done right, you gotta do it yourself. That's why I got the camera. <laughs> I think you get one more link out of that. Go ahead. I got a speed binder. I don't have to. <laughs> Matt, you want to shovel, shovel the rest of that dirt off? I can't believe you got the trailer so dirty. Don't 
Don't overexert yourself. <laughs> I'm not. Just use your words wisely here on camera. <laughs> Like What's you got it? enough, big enough inseam to get all that dose of there, man, behind the scenes. <laughs> White men can't jump, too. You seen that movie? Uh, I got I hops. I think it's for the test. Yeah, I think so, too. Highly worth the test. Go through the... Oh, well. Uh, we need uh, two more speed binders. Yep. Two? Yeah. Here's a question for you, Mr. Man behind the scenes. Okay. Is that considered one chain or two, and do you get full world load working? Two. two. It is two chains. Yeah, because that in the middle ain't nothing. That's just uh, yeah, make between. So does that get half the load working limit or full wor load working limit? It's designed to be able to hold full load, but that's just half the load it's getting. Yep. One half on one side, half on the other, but. So do two halves it, make a hole? In some cases. <laughs> depends if somebody has to bite Is out that, that half of the pie. W or with an H? <laughs> All right. All right. Go get some flies in a banner. <laughs> all right, guys. We're flagged and signed and chained and ready to go. Uh, I got a whole video with Officer Hoover of a load securement. I'm not going to get into a bunch of details on this video. But uh, we got to mark the back of the truck with wide load and signs, the front of the truck with wide load and flags, I'm sorry. And then there's flags on the side of the dozer blade, which is the widest point. We got to cover 50% of the working load, 50% of the weight of the machine with chains, which on this one requires six, four corners, two on the blade. Uh, yes, it is legal to hook to the track. Yes, it is legal to hook to the rub rail. Save your comments if you want to do it. Go check out the video of Officer Hoover. But uh, yeah. We're ready to uh, ready to roll, so pop back in here. Get our seat belt on. Release the brakes. Clutch all the way down, engage. Now, one thing, I'll get you guys some video of shifting gears here. But one thing that makes a difference is everybody wants to wrap the RPM gauge all the way out before you grab the next gear. Every truck's a little different. This one's about 1600. I let off of it, click right in there. I'll get up to about 14, 15, 1600. Right in there. You go and wrap it all the way out to the end of the RPM gauge, and then you gotta wait longer for it to come back down to find the next gear. Uh, most trucks are 12 to 1400. This one here's about 14 to 1600. It just, uh, you got to find out which uh, truck you drive. Of course, if you're driving an automatic, I guess it really don't matter. But uh, let me see if I can get you guys some foot shots.
I'll show you the gear shifter over here now. This little lever on the side, and that's what they call the high-low selector. You want to pre-select that. Whenever you get ready to go from fifth to sixth gear, you'll see me flip that up, and it will not actually shift until I hit the neutral bridge. So uh, we get up here and pull back down on the highway. I'll set the camera up here where you guys can watch the gear shifter, and uh, we'll go through the full, full range of gears. I think we'll end up hitting all eight of them here when we pull out on the road. So we may not use low-low. I don't know. We'll see. Hopefully you guys can piece the two together and make sense out of it. guys we got the uh, dozer unloaded and uh, tracked back in there we actually got i didn't get any video of it this time but you guys stay tuned we got a really cool project back here uh another pond dam repair or lake dam repair however you want to say it but uh we're gonna head on back to the shop or head on back to the office get this thing parked there's one thing we need to cover yet in our uh let me get pulled out here 
this is one of them situations where I'm going to use the uh, pull down to the Y line. So I straighten the truck up and follow it there. Let me here. Alright guys, we're getting ready to pull in the office here and I'll stop talking when we do so you can actually hear the truck as we downshift. But what you'll see is, is instead of uh, waiting for the truck to lose RPM to get to the, to the next gear as far as upshifting, you actually have to hit the throttle to raise the RPM to grab the next lower gear. I kind of cover the brake with my left foot just, uh, I don't know if it's a safety precaution, just kind of help control the deceleration. Then if I go to make a complete stop, I'll just slide it over to the clutch. But uh, I'll shut up here and let you guys kind of listen to the uh, truck as we go down through the gears. sleeper truck and pulling uh, box trailers uh, it gets a little bit more a little bit more difficult for sure but uh, keeping an eye on your equipment guys I mean you guys comment I got a board looser I got a light out uh, I'm well aware of all that stuff I, I know these trucks like the back of my hand and every time I walk around one whether it's to load something or pick something up I'm always looking at the truck and studying stuff and uh, just keeping sure everything's in uh, Everything's in good shape, nothing's gonna fall off, and everything's safe going up and down the road. I mean, my family goes up and down the road, and so does yours, so you don't wanna be uh, lack of maintenance or uh, negligence to be an issue for um, an accident. But uh, pop the brakes. Usually, if you pull one out, both of them come out, but you wanna make sure they're both out. But uh, switches, you got uh, headlamps, marker lamps, hookup lamps, and heated mirrors. This is your windshield wiper, jake brake. Engine shut down override, that way if you got a fault code and you need to get out of the intersection, you can do that. This is the uh, cruise control levers here, and this is the handbrake for the trailer. And then this is the controller for my light bar up top. That's your AC stuff. And then there's your turn signals and hazards. That's pretty much it. So, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. And as always, guys, we'll catch you on the next one.